today I'm loading up a roll of Ilford's HP 5 Plus. I'm gonna say something weird here, <laughs> but I have never used this film before. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. But with bills to pay and a family to feed, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. Come along as I follow my passion trying to create art that shows the essence of nature in a photograph. I'll be sharing my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Riding the Edge. It's kind of weird that I've never used this film. It's, it's got such a huge following. I know a lot of people really like it. I don't use a lot of 400 speed film. And in the past, my go-to, when I started journalism many years ago, my, my go-to was T-Max 400. I was an early adopter to that film. I loved it, I loved how it pushed. But for my nature of photography, I tend to go with more of a 100 speed, 50, 50 ISO, that type of thing. And lately I, f I feel like I'm kind of in a rut that I, I need to do, uh, try some different things, try some different looks. And so I thought a good place to start would be with the more classic grain that the HP5 should bring me. I think that might look good in some of the photos I make in the uh, detail shots, the uh, intimate landscape. Even 400 speed film is probably too slow for hand holding in these deep shadows. Really need a little bit of a slightly overcast kind of brighten up these areas. But even so, I might find something out in the light. We'll see. It's so easy to get stuck in our ways sometimes and get into a, a pattern that might actually stifle creativity. And I've become very aware of that recently, that I need to expand my, my ideas a little bit, not be so caught up on trying to get the finest grain image and, and uh, the best resolution. This isn't gonna be anywhere near what I get with my typical 100 speed Delta 100 or T-Max 100. But it might bring something else, a sense of uh, spontaneity that I don't get when I'm using a tripod. And if, if all I get out of this is enjoyment, honestly, that's often good enough. <laughs> if I'm not working on a specific project, sometimes photography, it doesn't need to be so serious. There's gonna be a lot of photos out here in a month or two as spring kicks in. Right now we're I'm looking more for the end of winter type photos. In this light, I'll probably end up doing quite a bit of uh, of uh, photos that don't need a lot of depth of field. <laughs> These ferns make a great subject for flow, uh, the the crossing. There's there's always some kind of interesting pattern I can get out of these sword fern. Got a little dew on the ferns here. Kind of glistens. I hope it comes out on the film. I was uh, photographing these new shoots backlit and then I've got the dark background. I'm not sure if the meter is going to meter this correctly. <laughs> I, uh, 
I'm, I'm thinking it's going to overcorrect and it's going to really blow out the, the leaves, but I, I tried to compensate for it, so we'll see what happens. Pretty shallow depth of field, but the plane of focus is pretty flat, so I just like the uh, the shape that the stems were making and then the leaves were po poking up, so I might be a kind of a cool shot if it actually works out. Much like how a child plays and learns as they play, I think I'm doing the same thing as I play with this film, test out this film, and shoot it in a different way. It's almost like I'm using this as a sketch pad. I'm learning as I go, I'm, I'm having fun. If these photos don't work out, I'll know next time uh, why they didn't work or if I uh, come across something and I think I might want to photograph it in the future and I've already done it and found out it, it just wasn't working for one reason or other, I won't even need to try to make that photograph. You would think after all these years I've photographed pretty much everything, but uh, I, I always am building up a memory bank of potential photos. And now that I'm doing it with a different film, it's adding another layer to the memory rank. Well, this, this is what this looks like with some grain to it. <laughs> what do you think it looked bad now? You should have seen me a few days ago. <laughs> I've been quite unlucky this year for uh, being able to avoid illness. And I haven't been out for a couple weeks because I've been ill. Today's our first maiden voyage walk in a while. I just, just got to get moving. Every day is a, a little bit better. And I still got a half a roll of film I, I want to get through. <clears throat> so please forgive my appearance in this video. <sighs> Often like to play two different types of foliage against each other. With the, with the, we got different, quite a bit different shapes with the fern and these more globular-looking leaves uh, around it. it kind of adds a visual contrast. I'm not saying that this is a great one, but uh, it's the kind of stuff I always look for to give a little bit of visual contrast. Playing the shapes off of each other. The, uh, I think the fern gives uh, the sense of motion, kind of gives the eye a direction to go, leading down into the, uh, the other foliage.
Now this uh, section of forest behind me caught my attention. The sun's kind of coming through it a little bit this morning. Putting some interesting light in these trees. I've been uh, wanting to try this, this film on some of my more uh, forest woodland type shots. Some of the more intimate scenes. I, I want to get a few test shots to, to see how this this uh, grain will render these images so that I can get an idea if this is a, a setting that I might want to use this film. Well, I finished my last frame here on this stand of trees. I've photographed these trees before, so it just gives me an idea of what I can expect with a grainier rendition of the scene. It's not the thing real special about it. It's got nice depth, and I do always like this slanted tree. But the purpose of this role was, was to test, and it, it's been a blast. I've really enjoyed just kind of just playing, <laughs> just playing with my camera. It's something I should be doing more often, and I, I can really see a value of just walking around with a, a, a film that you can handhold and, and uh, expect some results. It'll be nice to have an idea that, of what each film will do, and I can pick my, my film for the scene that I, or the subject that I'm making photos of. That's one of the important things about film is it's an artistic choice. It's just a matter of trying to get out of my comfort zone a little bit and find other options that I can pull out as a creative choice. And that's what it's about. It's about a creative choice. So I'm gonna get this back to the house and, and develop it and see what we got. If you haven't, <laughs> if you don't hear from me again, until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride. You don't think I'd end this video without hopping on here and giving you my impressions of this first roll of HP 5 Plus, do you? Let's, uh, let's get into my final thoughts. Let me just say, I was really surprised by this film. I had made a lot of assumptions to what I would see in this film. And I think those assumptions were based on what I'd seen online, on YouTube, other people's results. And I always thought, ah, that doesn't look like something I'd, I'd want to use. I'm really glad <laughs> I uh, tested it for myself. My assumptions were, this was a really grainy film, maybe high contrast, And I didn't think I would find the grain very pleasing. I've always kind of thought I, I preferred tea grain films and less, and less traditional films or traditional grain. And I was so surprised by how much I actually liked the look of the grain on this film. <laughs> I feel kind of silly that I haven't tried this film sooner. <laughs> I knew it was very popular. I just, I just couldn't see how I would use it in my photography. I think I understand now why this film is so popular. It's, it looks to be something that's extremely versatile. It could be used for so many different things. It's relatively affordable for a professional film. It's something that I'm definitely going to want to experiment more with. There's going to be a spot in my bag for a roll of <laughs> Ilford's HP 5 Plus. If you've made this far, uh, thanks for coming along. 
I hope you found this uh, interesting and useful. I'm going to say don't go by my results. Pick up a roll yourself if you haven't used it or any film that you're interested in and try it out for yourself. Use it with a developer you would normally work with and see if it's going to work for you. There's a few other films now that I'm thinking I really need to try. I can't base my thoughts on film on what other people are doing. I need to do my own testing. So this is, we're going to end this video right here. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.